Ooh, I don't know what this is. And then we have our boy Bob Paycheck. Uh, Chapek, sorry. Guess what they would be doing? We're doing, but they don't have it. Yes, he really just said that. I find that very disrespectful. Okay, so guys, this is a big video, right? We have um, officially hit 40,000 subscribers. I don't like the word subscribers. We got 40,000 people in a big family. That's insane. Wow. I want to thank you guys so much for you know subscribing and supporting me on this journey and I hope you guys have been entertained. So this video, Bob Chapek is in some hot water. We got to talk about that. Um, I kind of have a bunch of like little mini vlogs for this one. There's some other Disney drama going on. First off, we're going to show you what's going on inside the Disney parks right now. Guests are bringing cans of spray cheese and spraying them on Big Thunder Mountain. Yes, that's a thing. I want to talk about the Spider-Man animatronic. As we know, there's the video that surfaced of him crashing at Disneyland. Okay, well that one was actually fake. The guy who created it actually made a TikTok about how he faked it. This is how I faked the animatronic Spider-Man failing at Disneyland. Let's get into it. First, I tracked the scene inside of Synth Eyes. Because the shot had very little parallax, I created some building geo and projected some trackers onto them, essentially telling the program where those points should be in 3D space. Once I had a solid track, I brought it into Blender and modeled the building more accurately since I knew I'd be using it for collisions and also as a shadow catcher. Once I found a decent Spider-Man model, I then painstakingly hand animated it to match the real life Spider-Man, making sure it lined up the building that it will be crashing into. I stopped animating at a certain point because I knew it would transition into the physics simulation. Next, I brought everything into Houdini and dropped on a trail node to compute the velocity of the mesh. This helps the simulation know which direction the animation was going in. I then ran it through a soft body simulation and made sure it had lots of substeps for more accurate collisions. Then to match the lighting, I found an HDRI from HDRI Haven and tweaked it to closely match the footage. Next was compositing. I masked out Spider-Man and used After Effects content aware fill to make a clean plate. Then I color corrected Spider-Man and added the shadow. But now, what once was fake became a reality at Disneyland. Jared, airbags, please. Oh. Oh. That's right, that sucker crashed into the building. I hope the animatronic's okay, because that uh, cost Disney a lot of money. Okay, so next for the video, we went to Universal Studios. I want to go to uh, Poseidon's Fury. I haven't done that since it's like reopened, so I hope you guys enjoy that. It has finally happened, thank God. The turnstiles are gone. They have sensors up there now, so you no longer get hit in the legs or hit in the crotch if you're a guy going through the turnstile. Uh, we are now in Islands of Adventure. We're gonna do something I haven't done this year. Side and Fury. They uh, repainted everything, but it's so much more brighter than it used to be. We're going into the ruins. Will we find Darkanon? Oh, 
Uh, me, Taylor, the Global Discovery Group, and some friends. We were just leaving though, so don't worry about that. Shut up! You search for your master. My what? Oh, yes, the professor. And he said we're leaving. So Come then. Follow in his steps. Thank you, but that's not the journey we wish to take at the moment, so we're just gonna go. Taylor found the professor. That was kind of code word for the show is having technical difficulties, so it had to end in the first room, but they gave us an express pass. It is kind of cool because we get to go backstage, right? And see everything. This is where the regulated waste goes. So they have this little guy for uh, proper labels. We're going to try to come back later tonight. What is all that? So now the backstage is leading us over here where the little train goes. Now, this is a little spot. The sunset is out right now. This is kind of uh, towards the entrance of islands. A lot of couples are over here kind of like making out right now. But I want to take a second to show you guys this sunset. This is beautiful. The big one. You can win the uh, Jurassic Park plushes. But there's one dinosaur that I don't, I have never seen in Jurassic Park before. It's a little Yoshi I spot. Back, it is the nighttime now. Hopefully it uh, does not get delayed.
Taylor saved us all, but we can now officially go to the All Hallows Hula Boutique. They've added some new merch. $35, and I'm digging this shirt. Wish you were here. It's a perfect theme for this little uh, mini tribute store almost. Then they have kind of like the ugly tacky tourist shirt. It says Beware, $35. Then for $35, they have a, a pumpkin surfing with a little ghost in the back. Then we have this, oh God, terrifying pumpkin with a cat jumping out of it. And then we got the creature from the Black Lagoon jumping out of a swamp with pumpkins and mushrooms you're looking at $35 for this then they have now showing Frankenstein this Halloween night a monster movie 3d special it's Frankenstein I like that there's like a little goblin or something crawling out of his soda and then you got eyeballs and fingers and over here then it's Halloween all year long you have a witch Dracula and a skeleton if you're into this like kind of like retro Halloween merch this store is great because they have a lot of cool shirts they have a bunch of spooky girls right here and down here, they have Frankenstein and the bride sipping on some milkshakes or Coca-Cola. Now at Island, they still have the turnstiles. Welcome back. Uh, now the next little part is Ben was in town, so Jared wanted to join us for lunch. So we went to go eat at Wilderness Lodge. All right, we are back at Wilderness Lodge. Remember last time we were here? Uh, we found a little surprise and... We're gonna be going to Whispering Canyon for lunch. Whispering Canyon, I love. It kind of feels like Skipper Canteen, but like a Frontierland Skipper Canteen, because they kind of like roast you. It's such a fun time. I haven't been here in years, but Jared, Ben, and I are gonna experience it today. What's going on with Disney security? It's almost like you have to like fight to get into a resort, even when you have a reservation and your ID. It's just such a hassle. I feel like 75% of the Disney security guards just like make it not a fun experience entering into a Disney resort. Because just like yesterday, there was a car right here. Here we go. We're gonna hop into the gift shop real quick. We gotta see if they uh, fix the wallpaper situation. So the Wilderness Lodge Mercantile. Okay, they fixed the fridges before they just literally put like a, a wallpaper, wrapping paper over it. They fixed it and it looks nice. You can get frozen lemonade, Mickey bars, everybody's favorite, a chicken pot pie. The Whispering Canyon Cafe. I like the back of the chairs have this cowboy riding a horse. You guys dined with us before. So you know we have shenanigans, we laugh with you, laugh with yeah. you, you guys are cool with that. Yeah. Oh yeah. We've had to use that disclaimer the last couple days, it's been rough. Where'd you get the hat? That hat came from Amazon. So the manager got it two months ago. Yeah. And he brought it in, looked at the other managers and said, um, hey, I got this hat on Amazon. I don't know if the servers will wear it. And Julia and Ashley were like, oh, Lee will wear it. So the day I came, the first day I came in, I was like, ooh, whose hat is that? And they said, yours if you want it. It's been mine ever since. It's a good looking chip bowl on top. I can put stuff in there yeah, like sugar. Got all sorts of, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> explain it you just either get it or you don't 
What's this? A crab. It's a flock of these. Alrighty, so we have breakfast or lunch. Where are you all coming from? Seattle here. Where? Revere or River? Worcester or Webster? Oh yeah, I know Webster. I'm from New Hampshire. Ooh. Were well, you guys ready to order? You need more time. So we call it pod juice. Other places call it jungle juice. I used to call it the OPG, but everyone too young, they don't remember. Remember OPG? Yeah, you know me. I'm down with OPG. Remember that song? I was born in 95, so I feel like maybe... Yeah, you're too young. <laughs> The pog juice, the nectar of the gods, the world's greatest liquid on earth. Ooh, I love that stuff so much. This looks like some good cornbread. This probably looks like the same cornbread from a uh, Wilderness Lodge campground. We get the fried chicken and the quick service. That's what that looks like. Hey, what is that? Serious? Barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce with cornbread? Yeah. It's pretty good. You should try it. Mmm, it's soft. It's corny and it's warm. I can't complain. That's some decent cornbread. Here's my fork. <laughs> I don't know why you have that one. You should be using this one. That's a little baby corn. All right. Perfect. Digging in. Right, you got the carnivore as heck yeah. I don't know what this is. Usually it's like green beans and mashed potatoes, oh. but I guess for breakfast Here's it's the like barbecue. it's like pulled pork, yeah. ribs, chicken, corn. Veggie fruit fruit. How did the hamburger introduce his wife? How? He said meet Patty. Thank you so much. What is that? Gravy. Thought that was a Twinkie. All right, well guys, I got the chopped bison burger. It's gonna be on a house-made bun with chipotle aioli, candied hickory smoked bacon, cheddar cheese, a fried pickle, and sweet potato fries. All right, decent looking cross section, I like it. I love that chipotle aioli. Oh, it's like smokiness to it. All right, one final joke, Lee. You've All been right. great. Thank you so much for being a great server. Did you know that French fries weren't originally cooked in France? No, wait, where were they cooked? They were cooked in Greece. Ah, I like it. Yeah, we just finished. Here's a little shot of how the restaurant looked. We just finished. Great time. Lee was a lot of fun with his dad jokes and everything. Burger was really good. Normally, with like bison burgers, right, it can be kind of like dry and bland. This was packed full of flavor, tender and juicy. I think I'll do like an 8.5. Now, they do have a deep fried pickle. As you know, pickles are my arch enemy. I put that puppy off to the side. I, here's what it looks like, but normally there's like a fried pickle that comes on the burger. A lot of fun. If you want kind of like a chill kind of more affordable Disney atmosphere. I would go to Whispering Canyon. Okay, now it's time to go on to the rest of our adventure. Okay, we are now in Celebration, Florida. This is the little uh, post office that my PO box is at. So when you guys send stuff here, it comes to Celebration. If you didn't know, Celebration was the town that was built by Disney. I do want to say at Wilderness Lodge, the bathroom looked like Walter White was cooking something up in one of the stalls. But uh, let's go over here and uh, get some Starbucks real quick. Here's a little view of Main Street. Every cup is an adventure to the bathroom if you have Crohn's disease. Celebration is just such a weird place because it doesn't feel like you're in Orlando, you're in like this weird, it almost feels like a back lot or something. There's more people pushing dogs and strollers than kids. That's like the type of place this is. Sitting down over here by the little fountain. Got the Starbucks. Our girl, Christy McCarthy, the CFO of Disney. She gave herself the $11 million bonus. Uh, she just said this during an interview. The other thing I think it's underestimated is creativity. And I think you experienced it, you know, when you went through some of the new attractions that we have and certainly the, the, the new, um, we don't even call it a hotel, it's the interactive immersive experience of um, Starship, uh, Star Galactica, and Galactic Starship, excuse me. She really just said that about the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. As you know, that's Disney's newest hotel. It's more than just a hotel or just a little restaurant opening, right? This is a big deal. And the lady doesn't even know. She doesn't even know what it's called. Galactic Starship, excuse me. It's so frustrating. The higher ups have no idea what's going on within the parks. Disney's doing the bare minimum and the executives know the bare minimum. And then we have our boy, Bob Paycheck, uh, Chapek, sorry. Okay, so now we have to talk about Bob Chapek. The man, not the myth, and not a legend. So, Bob Chapek is officially a doctor now. Oh, God. Yeah, he's an honorary doctor, though, so is Dr. Chapek. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Chapek wanted to give a speech at the college that he went to where he got his honorary doctorate. And I watched the entire thing, so you didn't have to. And I picked out the best clips for us to enjoy. Bob Chapek. Good morning, President Witten, distinguished members of the faculty, graduates and members of our Indiana family. Thank you for calling me home. Day two of my freshman year outside Forest Hall, I met the love of my life. Because there was one thing we did as a family every year, and that thing was our annual visit 
to Walt Disney World. Okay, I find this highly suspicious. He said he would always go to Disney World, yet there's no photos or images of Bob Chapek on Disney property as a kid or teenager. Now, the one thing Disney loves to do, if you have visited the park or had any Disney plush animal and you become successful in the Disney Corporation, they love to milk those old photos to give you that emotional connection of the story, but yet for the CEO who said he went to Disney as a kid, there are no photos known to mankind. Driving through the gates, of the happiest place on earth was like nothing I've ever done before. That's right, Bob. It's something you have never done before. That is the catchphrase for Disneyland, my man. That's the Disneyland catchphrase, not the Disney World. Now, the Disney World catchphrase is the most magical place on earth. That has been their catchphrase since the early 90s. My entire life, that is the catchphrase I have grown up hearing, and it is ingrained into my head. But yet the CEO of Disney does not know the correct catchphrase. And the funniest part is this speech is pre-written. He's reading it. So Somebody did that man dirty by not editing it. It was sunny, warm, and impossibly green. The buildings were bright. The air smelled like popcorn. The happy people in really cool outfits said I was their guest. Yes, he really just said that. I find that very disrespectful because the first thing that when you start working for Disney and traditions is they tell you, you are not an employee, you are a cast member, right? And that is what you are called. But yet Chapek does not refer to the cast members as cast members. He refers to them as the happy people in really cool outfits. The happy people in really cool outfits. The Disney magic that I found in Orlando ignited my mind and ignited my spirit. Now, I did not set out to lead the company or even work for it. The reason you work for Disney is because you love Disney and you want to create that magical experience. And I remember the moment that I like was like, I want to go work for Disney. And then it was the moment we were visiting Disneyland. There's a cast member that just picked us randomly, right? It was a little magical moment and they took us all the way up. And I thought it was like the coolest thing in the entire world. This was Walt Disney's favorite place to nap. That bed coffee. Now, when you're a cast member, honestly, you don't make too much. You live kind of paycheck to paycheck. The average income in Orlando is $30,000, which doesn't go very far with the cost of living down here. Because look, you're looking at $1,800 for a one bedroom apartment, and that's not even including utilities and everything else. While, you know, last year Bob Chapek goes off and buys a new mansion for $12.5 million. There's just something wrong with that picture. And just like Iron Man draws his energy from that arc reactor, I get a thump from my drive to prove myself every single day. It's a lifetime power supply that pushes me through doubts, difficulties, and to this day, I still heavily prepare for everything I do. Okay, Bob is not prepared for anything. Look how he handled the Scarlett Johansson incident with her and how Bob has handled politics this year. And I make sure I've got answers, not just to the questions at hand, but to any questions that could come up about the answers to my original question. Y'all understand anything that man just said? Listen to that again and let me know if you understand it. And I make sure I've got answers, not just to the questions at hand, but to any questions that could come up about the answers to my original question. I'm very confused. This reminds me of, um, there was an interview that he did when Galaxy's Edge was opening and he said something and I was like, what did, what did, you, what did you just say? Any of our competitors had our intellectual property, guess what they would be doing? The exact same thing they're doing. We're doing but they don't have it. I find it very interesting, right? This is the guy who's in charge of one of the most powerful companies in the entire world. And that means I'm armed with an immense depth of insight whenever I walk into a meeting or any kind of negotiation. Oh, this hurts my brain. But frankly, preparation alone is not enough. And I know it's cliche, and maybe I've been pixie dusted many two times, but I absolutely believe that willpower can help you overcome incredible odds and achieve just about anything. Except getting an annual pass for Disneyland because they don't exist right now because they're being sued for false advertisement. Yeah, that's, that's happening right now. Now, for many people, Disney represents some of that common ground that brings us all together. And it's one of the reasons I'm so proud to lead this fine company. We believe in acceptance and we believe in a welcoming spirit. <sighs> Bob, you really saying that after everything you said this year? And when guests walk through our gates, the points of division just seem to evaporate away. The division of income, because the Disney parks cost so much, you can only be upper middle class or rich to kind of afford the Disney parks. So that's the division he's talking about probably. In fact, the biggest disagreements our guests generally have is arguing whether Splash, Thunder, or Space is the best mountain. Oh, the fuck's life! Remember Hopper? People feel the way they do about Disney 
because of the stories that we tell, stories that connect on a deep emotional level. Feeding time. Go surprise the world. Well, Bob, you did surprise the world with that speech. Now, in the past year, the Disney stocks have plummeted, making Chapek not look very good. So Abigail Disney is reportedly trying to challenge Bob Chapek's pay. So she's going around and talking and organizing with, with, with a bunch of the shareholders to kind of like downgrade his pay, which is gonna be very interesting to see what happens with that. From what I was kind of hearing is that everybody's just kind of riding out their time for Chapek's contract to end. I believe it ends in less than a year. So after that, then finally change can start to happen within the Disney parks kind of getting back to how it used to be. Now it's not gonna happen overnight, right? It's probably gonna be a decade before things hopefully get better to how things used to be, right? Uh, their mindset right now is so tunnel vision on Disney Plus that they're not funneling really too much money into the advancements of the Disney park. The reservation system's gonna be around, Genie Plus is gonna be around. It's not about what we think. It's really about what our guests in mass think. Guests don't like that. Disney says they're listening to their guests. They're not. You know, Universal Studios listens to their guests. If they constantly do surveys, they don't like something, they listen to the guests and they change it or they keep it how the guests like it because they care about their guests because they want to keep them coming back. Right now, I think Disney's just kind of coasting on pixie dust. There's a lot of good stuff still at the company. A lot of great, incredible cast members still creating magic. So I don't want everybody just to write off Disney, right? I guess we can laugh at JPEG and some of the stuff he says, but there's still a lot of great things within the company. And that's why I still do keep coming back. It's not perfect. Eventually, it's gonna get back to normal and hopefully be guest oriented, but it, it's gonna be a while. I don't want you to give up on Disney, right? I'm not giving up on Disney. Eventually, the right people will be at the right power positions and there will be change. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts about that speech that Bob Chapek gave. What do you think about it? Uh, did you agree with anything that he said or did you disagree with anything that he said? But guys, I love you all. Again, thank you so much for the 40,000 of you who have hit subscribe button and you know, join the family. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, join the family. I love the family! But I just wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart because I meet you guys all the time in the strangest places I'll run into you guys, but it's always a blast talking with you and hearing about the joy that the videos have brought you, which like means a lot to me because that's the whole reason I make these videos, right? Is to entertain you guys. There's a lot of videos coming up. We're down to like nine videos behind. Again, I'm a one-man show. I'm, work I'm working on it. And I will see you all very soon. The happy people in really cool outfits. I know, Bob, that was a good one, man.